Chris, what is our second main topic today? This one comes from Clark Kent. No. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen him without his glasses? No. Mm, me neither. Recently, Shazam director David Sandberg was asked about whether he would ever direct a Superman film. His answer was no, because many fans go into CBM films with different interpretations of the character already in their mind that it just pisses them off regardless of the film's established story and tone. I think this raises a really interesting topic that also was also discussed in Man of Steel's Movie Club episode, that for these Superman-Batman films that people go into these movies already expecting a certain interpretation, even though they haven't watched the film. What are your thoughts on this preconceived notion topic of CBM films? All right, thanks a lot for sending that in. And listen, I am just, I am a big fan of David Sandberg. Like, not just because of what he did with Shazam, but Lights Out. I love Lights Out. It is, I think, the greatest horror short film in YouTube history. Oh, it's great. I really do. I, I think it's the best YouTube short horror story. And then a studio actually gave him money to go and make that short film into a feature, which is everybody's dream when they make a short film. Like, that is the dream. Absolutely. Everybody who makes a short film on YouTube, their dream is some studio sees and goes, here's some money, go make a major motion picture feature. And he did, and I remember thinking, how the hell do you turn that, that concept, which was awesome, but how do you turn that into a full-length feature film? And he did it. And then he came over to do Shazam. And I was like, really? The, the lights out guy? But okay, whatever. I love Shazam. It is my second or third favorite DCEU movie. Uh, obviously behind Man of Steel. And uh, then maybe tied with, maybe just behind the new James Gunn Suicide Squad. But I think Shazam was utterly fantastic. I love it. I like it more than most people do, granted. But I thought he did a great job. So, yeah, somebody got him on social media and said, what other DC projects would you like to do Superman? And he basically said no. But I'm actually really fascinated by why he said no. This comes to us from the folks over at CBR who wrote the following. During a QA and a on Instagram, Sandberg was asked if there's another DC hero he'd like to direct. At one point, I would have said Superman, but there are so many different expectations and hardcore fans, you're going to piss off so many people no matter what you do, Sandberg wrote. Seeing how people react to things like The Last Jedi makes me want to stay away from things like that. Shazam was perfect in that there hadn't been many ad adaptations before. There are still people who think it was uh, done wrong, but it was on a manageable level. And that, of course, comes to us from Shazam director David Sandberg. And... Sandberg is absolutely right, and Clark Kent was absolutely right as well, who wrote in. We were discussing this a little bit on our Man of Steel movie club episode that we did this past week, in that a lot of people, and, and this is true of more than just Man of Steel, this is true of a lot of franchise stuff. People approach a movie with a preconceived idea about what it is supposed to be before they ever see it, right? Right? Some people say, why did they change Superman? Well, change from what? There's like 500 different iterations of Superman in the comics. Which one were you hoping for? That, and this is why when people ask me, John, who should play whatever role? I say, I don't do X actor and X role things because I don't know what the writers of that new movie have in mind for what their version of X character is going to be. And since I don't know what their version of the character is, I don't have an idea. If you had asked me before seeing or reading anything about Christopher Nolan's Joker, I, I, I would never have picked Heath Ledger. Maybe I would have, though, if I had read the script and saw what they were going for. I never would have picked, I mean, you you name it. There, there's a lot of, never would have picked Hugh Jackman to play Wolverine. Right. Nobody on the planet would have picked Hugh Jackman to Singing, play Wolverine. Singing, dancing guy? Come on, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, the Broadway like show six, guy? Six plus feet tall. The Australian yeah. six foot three. Nah. Yes, Don? No. But <laughs> now we can't imagine it without him, mm -hmm. right? And that's one of the reasons why I always say when you talk about these movies, it's okay to have speculation. Just don't let your speculation become expectation. And David points it out. Well, I want to look at this quote again when he says, um, at one point I would have said Superman, but there are so many different expectations and hardcore fans. You're going to piss off so many people no matter what you do. He's right. No matter what way you do Superman, you're going to piss off a bunch of people. Because I'll tell you what, Zack Snyder gave us a fucking awesome Superman. He gave us an awesome Superman. 
but it was not what a lot of people preconceived in their minds what it was going to be and what their, what they thought Superman would look like or sound like. And therefore, I just simply didn't go in. Now, there's a bunch of people who watched Man of Steel and just didn't like it because it didn't work for them. And that's fine. That's great. But I've also heard from a lot of people that said, that's not my Superman. That's nothing like Christopher Reeves' Superman. And you're, you're right. It's not like Christopher Reeves' Superman. And it shouldn't be. But, but that's the thing. You go into these things, and then he brings up the Last Jedi example, you know, which brings it to another level. Because, listen, David Sandberg's not just the first, the first filmmaker to bring up the Last Jedi. Dave, um, uh, Christopher McQuarrie who I think is one of the most exciting filmmakers in the business today. I remember last year, I remember he said, oh yeah, man, no, I'll never do a Star Wars movie. I saw what the Star Wars fans did to Ryan Johnson. I'm not, I'm not going to make a Star Wars movie. And now we're kind of hearing the same, in spirit, the same kind of thing from a David Sandberg. We as fans can be really awesome, and we as fans can be pretty dickish sometimes. Yep. We're about to talk about Morbius in a little bit. <laughs> and... <coughs> <laughs> All I can say to Daniel Espinoza is, hey, dude, thank you for giving it your best shot. <laughs> you can interpret what you think that means once <laughs> we we'll go and talk about Morbius in a bit. I like life. <laughs> I like li yeah, I like yeah. life, too. It's pretty good. But, I mean, all I can say is, hey, man, you know what? You took a shot of Morbius. Thank you for giving it a shot. But, I mean, he's right. We as fans can be pretty nasty um when that doesn't happen and i think if i think there are more directors who feel the same way that christopher mccrory did that david sandberg did anyway rob you hear sandberg's comments here what do you make of it it's not surprising and i, I tend to agree with him you know john what's interesting to me uh, and and we we did i really thought our movie club not to pat ourselves on the back but why shouldn't we our movie club was pretty good about man of steel i thought we had a really great conversation i loved our conversation about i man thought it was steel. really great um but one of the things about Man of Steel, and it's 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 it, the movie's not even called Superman because Superman isn't Superman yet. That's why it's called Man of Steel. But the thing about Man of Steel is it starts from scratch and rebuilds the Superman mythos for that particular movie. The same way that Christopher Nolan went back and rebuilt the Batman mythos within the context of his Batman Begins, then the, his Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. And I would think that as fans, when a filmmaker does that and starts from scratch and says, okay, I'm going to give you some familiar and then I'm going to do an update of this character and try and set this character. What would it mean if Superman showed up in our world today? Clearly, that's what they're doing. And it's frustrating, I think, for you and I to watch a movie like Man of Steel. And I thought the movie did a pretty good job of establishing its version of the Superman mythos and give us a Superman that is true to that new version of the myth that is self-contained in that movie. And yet, when people are criticizing Man of Steel, they're criticizing stuff that's not in the movie. They're criticizing something that the movie hasn't given you. They're going, but Superman's supposed to be this way. And like you'd pointed out, not in this film, he's not. Like, you might not appreciate or like what they're presenting to you, but they've built it up from scratch, just like you read an Elseworlds tale where Superman lands in Russia or, or Gotham by Gaslight, where Batman's in the Victorian era. And when they do something like this, I would expect fans who are astute would go, OK, but we don't. You know, a lot of fandom is like, nope, you know, it's got to be the way this movie was 50 years ago. Well, you couldn't do that anyway. And so I think Sandberg won. It makes me sad that a talented filmmaker is put off perhaps making a genre movie that we might find to be fantastic. You know, I I would love to see a Chris McCory Star Wars movie. Love it. And I bet it would be great because Chris McCory is not He's a writer and a director. And he'd probably come up with something. I mean, so is Ryan Johnson. But, you know, something different, something more along the lines, because I think Chris McCory is more uh, he fits that material more. But it just makes me sad that there's a filmmaker that we as fans have driven away from potentially giving us what could be a wonderful movie. Chris, you hear uh, what Sandberg is talking about here. I mean, the idea, after seeing what he did with something with the sensibilities of a lights out and what he did with Shazam, which I completely I adored. Shazam. And he even slipped in a little Superman mm -hmm. into Shazam. 
I really would have liked to have seen a, a Superman movie under him, but what do you think about him saying he wouldn't do it and his reasons why? What, what's your take on it? I mean, I'm with you. I'd love for him to do Superman because look at all the joy he found in Shazam. And yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I love that film. That is probably one of my favorite DCEU films. I think it is just so delightful. Um, I, I really wish that he'd do that, but I completely understand it. You know, we are all guilty of this. And let's let's not pretend that I've never done this, right? I, I came for the first season of Umbrella Academy. If this is not comic book accurate, and why did they do this to Cha-Cha? And I don't like this, you know? And then I kept watching the show and went, oh, they had a plan and they did things. And now I understand. And that's why I wasn't in the writer's room. These folks got it down, right? We got to sometimes let things breathe. We got to let things percolate before we can really come to a decision on it, right? Um, I understand not not diving in though when this is how the public reacts to things. I'm a big Last Jedi stand. And I I really, really hated to see how people reacted to that film. This is not my Star Wars. This is not what I want. Not everything is for you. Like how not everything is made for me. I have to understand that certain things are made for other people to but enjoy. But you did love Morbius. Oh my God. There's actually two <laughs> things I really liked and I'm excited to talk to you about it um, for the most part now. And I, and I hope someone else though finds so much joy in that film because good for them. But if we all attack everything in a way that's, this isn't made for me, so it's not made for anyone, then what's the point of making movies? Because if we all have the same perspective, life is entirely boring. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's one of the the knocks against us as a fandom is that sometimes we tend to be gatekeepers. Yeah, we tend to be like, if uh, like, let me tell you, you're only a real fan of this thing if you like it the way I like it. And I think we've all been guilty of that. Absolutely. I, I think all I of us have been guilty. <laughs> <laughs> not even one time. I but I, I but it's true. I think everybody watching this, and I think everybody on this show, I think we've all been guilty of that from time to time. Yeah. And, and and I can see, especially if you're a director like Samber, you see the way fans treat some filmmakers sometimes they go well i don't want to have anything to do with that and i think it's a shame because i think there's probably a lot of great filmmakers that aren't saying this publicly but are probably privately yeah i'm never going to make one of those movies because yeah. i've seen how whether it's the marvel fandom the dc fandom the star wars fandom the harry potter fandom i've seen how they can treat filmmakers if they don't like which way things go so it's it's i think it's a lesson for all of us as film fans myself included anyway guys question is for you what do you think about this? David Sandberg saying he wouldn't do a Man of Steel movie because of these things. Do you see where he's coming from? Do you maybe think he's overreacting to it? Whatever you guys think, jump down in the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.